Hi everybody and welcome back. If you've just found the channel recently then, welcome. So tonight I have a fantastic story for you. Honestly, I think this is one of the best things I've ever done. And I have a lot of people to thank for that. Firstly, I'd like to thank Lucretia, the incredible author of this story. I did something back in December for my Christmas special, a story called The Amateur. And uh, this is a follow-up to that. If you haven't heard that one, go and remedy that immediately. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. And I'd like to thank the awesome vocal talents of my collaborators as well. We've got Mr. Davis playing Elmer. We have Margbot playing Ellie. And then those two are ably supported by Creepy Pasta Goblin and Penny Dreadful Moment. These guys all put a lot of time and effort into helping me with this project. I thank them immensely, and please do me a little favor and go over to their channels. Give them a listen, a like, a comment, and subscribe, of course. So, I think we all know what time it is, don't we? <laughs> Sit back and relax with your favorite drink. Lie down with your favorite drink if you prefer, because it's time to listen. She was on her knees, with her right ear glued to the floor. Ellie? Shh. She shushed him. It had been over thirty years since she last welcomed him home with her buttocks up in the air. But, back then, the context was <clears throat> completely different. Ellie, what are you doing? Shh. She shushed him again, with a hiss as an undertone. Elmer placed the paper bag containing their freshly baked bread on the dust-collecting sofa they kept in the hallway. He'd wanted to get rid of the old thing ages ago, but his wife wouldn't let him. It was a wedding present from her mother. He slowly approached the living room, where his wife was bent and crumbled, looking like she spontaneously wanted to pray, but instead had got a cramp. The parquet creaked mildly under his careful steps. Am I missing something? Get down here! Elmer sighed. Neither his age nor his body mass would appreciate what he was about to do. He knelt down next to his wife and tried lowering his face to hers, to see her better. Lower! No, her hair wasn't stuck in between the floorboards. He ran out of ideas. Elmer sighed again as his hands eased the side of his head to the cold, hard wood. Ellie's face, pale as a ghost, didn't even begin to cover it. Don't you hear it? She hadn't whispered to him in years. The last time she whispered to him was almost a decade prior, when their oldest son came to visit in the middle of the night, and Ellie thought that someone had broken into their house. He liked hearing a whisper. It was a nice change from the constant nagging and complaining. Hear what? There might have been a bug stuck under there somewhere, but Elmer had a hunch his wife was whispering about something else. There was panic in her freckled hands, panic in her dilated pupils. My name! Can't you hear it? It's calling my name! It burst? I wasn't sure, but now I'm sure. Can't you hear it? Listen closely. Alma stared at his white-haired spouse, dumbfounded. Unless Ellie's name was deaf static, he was quite sure he couldn't hear anything. I don't hear anything. Shh! Listen! Listen! Nothing. Did you hear it? Hear what? Eliza. It's echoey. Eliza. Like from the bottom of a well. Elmer's hands helped his torso up again. I, I don't hear anything. With close to inhumane effort, the old man got up and offered a helping hand to his life partner. Eliza. Ellie, I got the bread. We can have breakfast now. There's something calling your wife from under the floor and all you can think about is stuffing your fat gut? So much for the whispering. It was nice while it lasted, Elmer thought. 
I'll go set the table. He loved her. He really did. But sometimes he had these doubts. Elmer was already in the kitchen when Ellie called him back in the living room to give her a hand with getting up. the following morning, he was welcomed home by not one, but two backsides staring at him from the living room floor. Elma sighed. The torso attached to the butt dressed in black rose to reveal a head. Good afternoon, Father Jonathan. Ah, Elmer. Good afternoon. Ellie shushed both of them. Father Jonathan looked at her for a second, and then back at Elma, pressing his lips into a line of mild desperation. Elmer entered his living room with the same caution as the day before. His wife spoke to him from foot level. They're gone today. Not even I can hear them. Ellie sat upright and looked the priest dead in the eye. I think they're afraid of you. The priest shrugged. Elmer's frame got in between, offering each of them a helping hand. Ellie hesitated. I wish they would say something while you're here, Father. Elmer... Godless as he is, can't hear them, but I'm sure you would. The priest and Elmer exchanged a worried glance. Ellie got to her feet too, and caught a glimpse of that exchange. I'm not crazy, father. Nobody said you are a child. Elmer found that sentence quite oxymoronic. The devil works in mysterious ways. However, we must not exclude the possibility of interpretation. They called me by my name. Father John reached a conclusion based on Elmer's facial expressions. I shall bless this room for your peace of mind, child. The house, Father. Bless the whole house. Have you heard it anywhere else? No, just here. But please bless the whole house. Elmer left the room. Father Jonathan followed him in the hallway, to the couch where he left his cross and holy water, where Ellie's hearing range couldn't reach them. She's old, Elmer. Bear with her. I am, Father. Elmer looked over the priest's shoulder at his wife, who dropped to her knees and glued her ear to the floor again. Always have, always will. Catherine called this morning. Elmer frowned and let his knife and fork drop on his half-empty plate. And you didn't call me why? You were out buying bread. I doubt she called that early. Ellie gave him an annoyed glance. She always made that face on the few occasions Elmer would raise his voice at her. I was out in the garage. You should have called me. I haven't spoken to her in two weeks. She'll call again. Elmer and Ellie had three children. Eric, Edward, and the apple of Elmer's eyes, Catherine. Catherine was supposed to be named Eleanor but Eleanor was the name of Elmer's most hated teacher back in school. He had to fight Ellie on that one. Fine, then, Ellie had said. You name her if you're so good at all of this all of a sudden. And, as Elmer stared at the wrinkled little face of the cooing bundle in his arms, he decided. Catherine, this is Daddy's little Kathy. Yes, she is. All three children grew up to be fine adults. Eric went to law school and became a very renowned lawyer. Edward was offered a job at a startup firm which grew quickly, placing him in a high up position, despite him never going to university. And Catherine went to med school, but dropped out after two years to become a nurse. Ellie was furious with her. Not Elmer though. Elmer knew why his baby girl decided against med school even though medicine and helping others had always been her biggest passions. I can't do it, Daddy. Kathy cried to him over the phone. They're so cold. Whenever an operation is a failure, they go back to the patient's family and, Lord, they're so cold. I can't be that cold, Daddy. I don't want to be that cold. So much responsibility. Somebody's life in your hands. I can't do it. I'm such a lousy coward. No, baby, Elmer assured her. 
Everybody I know is a bigger coward than you. You just have a heart of gold. And the world is toughest on people with hearts of gold. Elmer? Ellie barely touched her dinner, but, as always, she waited for him to notice and ask what's wrong, rather than simply request something else to eat. Not today, Elmer thought. Today he had had a chance to speak to his most precious child, but his wife was too comfortable to go get him to the phone. He felt he had a right to be a little upset with her. Elmer, I'm talking to you! What is it? Ellie played the puppy eye card. I'm sorry if you don't like the Brussels sprouts, but we had to cook them today or they would have gone bad. It's not the food, Elmer. Then what? I heard it again today. Heard what? Ellie was trembling. The voice in the living room underneath the floorboards. It's back. Her eyes were glistening. They glistened like that when they found out they were expecting their third child and Ellie wanted to get rid of it. They glistened like that when Ellie asked Elmer to apply for a bank loan to send their oldest son to college. She was reaching out to him. She needed him. An old, drained, distressed woman reaching out to her rock. Father Jonathan blessed the entire house just last week. It's still here, Elmer. I heard it again today. Clearer than ever. You want me to go check again? No. You won't hear it. Nobody will. It's here for me. Her lower lip began to vibrate. I'm going to die, Elmer. Elmer immediately got out of his chair and went to hold his wife. Ellie was sobbing against the right strap of his suspenders, mumbling something about sorrow and not wanting to go. For her sake, Elmer's composure hardened to iron. You're not going to die, Ellie. Don't you remember what the doctor said last month? He said you're as healthy as could be, and that unless fate plays dirty, you'll live to see your grandchildren reach adulthood. Our oldest grandchild just turned eight, dear. There's nothing for you to worry about. Ellie was holding on to her husband with such force, he would have lost his balance if he were less heavy. No, it's coming for me. It's... Look at me, Elmer. Elmer's gaze met Ellie's blurred orbs. It said I must confess before I go. Elmer's blood ran cold. Having a voice tell his wife she must confess before she goes was on a completely different word palette than Eliza was. Who did? The voice, Elmer. It said, I must confess. He knelt down next to her, her hands in his. Ellie, there is no voice. Ellie pulled her hands out of Elmer's and turned to her untouched dinner again. Honey, I think you need help. And why the hell do you think I'm telling all of this to you for? Not for me, Ellie, from a professional. We can schedule an appointment with a professional. Maybe Kathy knows somebody. No! Ellie grabbed the shoulders of her kneeling husband with crumbling strength. Don't you dare mention any of this to Catherine. If you must ask Eric or Edward if they have any connections, but don't under any circumstance mention any of this to Catherine. Catherine mustn't know. All right. Catherine won't know. Her grip sweetened, and she brought her right palm to her husband's soft cheek. Do you want me to call Father Jonathan again? No, it's not him I need to confess to. Elmer felt cold at the pits of his arms. Elmer? Yes? Ellie opened her mouth and closed it again. You can trust me, Ellie. You can tell me anything. You know that. Her chair creaked as she backed away from the table and got up. I'm going to bed. I'm tired. Ellie locked herself in the bedroom, making it clear for Elmer that he had to spend the night in the living room. Whether Ellie was sleeping or not, Elmer knew better than to bother her. He loved her. He really did. Sometimes, however, he simply had these doubts that were eating away at him. Elmer woke up the following morning and found that the bedroom was empty. He was always the one who was first to wake up. She wasn't in the kitchen either. Elmer didn't even snap his suspenders over his shoulders in his hurry to go outside and call for Ellie. She was at the back gate, 
the gate they only used when they were going to the baker's. The walk was shorter that way. Where were you? The paper bag she was holding made it obvious. I want to make breakfast today. The old man watched as his wife was in no hurry to get back inside the house. Ellie was a night person. He, on the other hand, was a morning person. Breakfast was his duty, whereas dinner was hers. It's been like that for the past four decades of their marriage. Like those cute, yet deadly painful routines that old couples have. Elmer knew breakfast was his job, and seeing Ellie do it instead felt foreign and unpleasant. He followed his wife inside and stopped in the kitchen doorway. The sizzle of oil was in perfect harmony with Ellie scrambling eggs and the happy birdies outside. She was making French bread. He could tell, even with her back to him. Bacon and spring onions were on the table, just waiting to be chopped. Elmer entered the kitchen and grabbed the knife nearest to him. No! Ellie had her arm around the bacon and spring onions in a matter of seconds. I'll do it. He froze. Ellie looked like she'd just jumped in front of a bullet to protect her children. She was even rigid with determination and everything. Ellie, are you... all right? Elmer put the knife down cautiously. She avoided his gaze. I want to do it. I need something to do. Go read the paper in your lazy boy or something. I'll call you when it's ready. Elmer's hand met Ellie's on the knife. Put it down, love. Ellie gasped softly. He rarely caught her love. But whenever he did, her heart would sigh. I do. Over and over again. She put the knife down. Look at me. She hesitated. Elmer was well accustomed to her dramatic outbursts. But this, this was different. What's wrong? Ellie opened her mouth and closed it right back. Just like the night before. Come on, Eliza. Talk to me. Her chin was trembling. I can't help you if you don't speak. She always needed somewhere between three and five reassures before she would talk. Sometimes, she needed to cry for a good half an hour before she would manage to upright herself enough to speak. Some say you can spend a lifetime alongside a person and never get to know them. But Elmer knew his wife. Oh, he knew his wife really, really well. And, despite all her flaws, he really loved her. And he really had some doubts. I... Alma didn't rush her. He held her hand to his chest and looked at her with all the understanding in the world. I heard it again. He wouldn't have asked if she hadn't paused. Hear what, honey? The voices, calling me. From the living room? Ellie shook her head as salt water was smudging her sight. Bedroom. Elmer felt cold in the pits of his arms again. When? This morning. I woke up at 6 a.m. and it was faint. I got closer, and there it was again. The smell of burnt French bread was making Elmer nauseous. Eliza. The floor? Yes. He had to hold her by the elbows, so she wouldn't lose balance. Her whimpers were heartbreaking. Elmer, you have to believe me! The bread turned to charcoal. Breakfast was ruined. I believe you, honey, but I also believe that you need professional help. Ellie shook her head again. It's not help I need. She straightened her frame and swallowed her sobs. I need to confess. Confess to what, honey? She took her arms out of her husband's grip. The phone rang and Ellie took that as her cue to leave. She stormed out of the kitchen and into the hallway with the agility of a twenty-year-old. Elmer got to the stove and turned the thing off before it would burn their entire house down. To his delight, he could still hear his wife talking to their daughter. He needed to hear Catherine's voice too. But he knew that, this time... His wife needed her more than he did. When they moved in together, the couple established some house rules. Number one, no pets. Ever. Number two, 
One is just as busy as the other, so the house chores have to be shared equally. Number three, two meals a day is more than enough. And number four, no matter how bad things get, they are not allowed to keep secrets from each other. This last rule was Elmer's favorite thing about being married to Ellie. When Ellie was young, she was the embodiment of poise. He knew it wouldn't be easy, but he had made up his mind the very second he laid eyes on her. It took him no less than eight months to convince her to go out with him, and when she finally did, Elmer was so nervous, he got sick, and they had to cut their date short by three hours. He was head over heels for her. Always had been. He regretted nothing. Even so, sometimes, he had these doubts. Ellie had been a sweetheart all week. She made both breakfast and dinner was using words such as please and thank you again, and, to Elmer's mind-numbing surprise, she was cuddling up to him in her sleep. Bedtime was the only time she would enter the bedroom, and, whenever she did, she would cling to Elmer like her life depended on it. Entering the living room was out of the question. Therefore, when it came to the house chores, she delightedly accepted her husband's help. Elmer was to take care of the living room and the bedroom. All other rooms in the house were in her care, including the attic, which she always hated. Two weeks passed, in which Ellie was distracting herself with housework. Other than the fact that she was deliberately avoiding the living room and bedroom, life was turning back to normal. Until one day, Ellie ran sobbing out of the house, directly into her husband's arms, who was reading the newspaper in the garden. He didn't even ask. He just cursed under his breath and waited for the wife to pull herself together and tell him where the voices came from this time. The attic, Elmer! He felt so sorry for her. The poor thing was shaking from head to toe, and her sobs were excruciating. They're in the attic. How, Elmer? And why? The attic is over the kitchen. The voices are over my kitchen, Elmer. They've reached the kitchen. Elmer bit his lip. He didn't speak because he knew he would break down alongside her. All he could do was hold her as tightly as possible and rock their bodies gently until she calmed down. What are they saying? Ellie's fingernails dug into the front of his shirt. That I must confess. Confess to what, Ellie? What's weighing you down, honey? I'm so confused. Ellie pushed his chest away gently. She looked up at him, tears rolling down her face. Come on, Alma said. Let's go inside. I'll make tea and we can- No. Ellie wiped her nose with the sleeve of her blouse. I don't want to go back in the house right now. All right. Stay here. I'll go get the blankets and put the kettle on the stove. No. She inhaled twice and then looked at him dead in the eye. Something big was coming. Elmer could feel it. You know, Mother never approved. Of us. Of our marriage. Yes, I know. She always said, I have to be smart. You already know what my father did. He took everything when he left us and my mother always said, I must trust no man. Ever. Elmer's forehead felt hot. It's her fault. She said, I need to save money. She said, saving money behind the man's back is always a good idea, regardless of how things turn out. She made me think that you would one day just get up and leave me and the kids behind. Or that, if you don't end up being a good husband, I must take the kids and leave. And? Did you reach a verdict yet? Do I make a good husband or are you still putting money aside, just in case? Ellie lowered her head in shame. How much? She was crumbling under his stare. Eliza, how much? Last time I counted, somewhere around 300,000. When was the last time you counted? Two years ago, when you and Catherine went to- Two years ago? We've been married for 39 years. She started sobbing again. Elmer's tone was calm, but- Deep down, 
he was boiling with rage. Throughout our married life, we've had two loans from the bank, Eliza. The first when we bought the house, and the second when our oldest went to college. I paid off both of them, all by myself. Now you're telling me that as I was working my ass off to provide to our family, you were putting a fortune together just in case you decided you don't like me? It's not like that. Then what's it like? Tell me. Your salary was higher than mine. Alma's mind, heart, and body went numb. Not by a lot, Ellie, and we both know that. Ellie regretted that last sentence of hers, and she would regret it for the rest of her days. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Elmer. Forgive me. It's all on your mother's couch, isn't it? Yes, it's all there. Take it, Elmer. You can have it all. Just please forgive me. There was nothing pretty about watching the love of his life cry. Ellie had gone through enough the past few weeks, and having her husband angry with her wouldn't soothe things in the least. Elmo was already looking for excuses in his mind, to convince himself that Ellie was indeed an angel, but with a demonic mother. Tell me something, Eliza. Would you have ever told me about the money if the voices didn't tell you to? She hesitated. I yes I would have. Eventually. Elmer inhaled deeply and exhaled steam. Apparently, he didn't know his wife as well as he thought he did, but he knew enough to tell when she was lying. Never in a million years would he have thought that the dusty old couch they kept in the hallway was an undercover deposit box, but he wanted to believe her so badly. He wanted to believe that she was sorry. He wanted to believe that she would have eventually told him why she didn't want to throw the old couch away but his heart was just as smart as the rest of him. If it weren't for the voices, Ellie would never have told him about the money. Where did you put the Johnny Walker? In the coffee cupboard, behind the paper bag on the left. Good. I need a drink. Of course, honey, I'll get the- Alone. Ellie looked like a kicked puppy. I need to be alone. I need to think. Stay here if you can't go back into the house yet. And, just like that, for the very first time in almost half a century, Elmer turned his back on his wife. He had his doubts all right, but this blow was quite unexpected. The phone rang. Elmer picked up. Donovan residence. A choir of angels made itself heard from the other end of the line. Hi, Dad. It's me. It was the very first good thing that had happened to him those last few weeks. Catherine, my baby curl. It's so good to hear your voice. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. I'm happy I finally got you on the phone for once. We haven't talked in ages. You're not the only one who's happy, kiddo. Nostalgia's no joke once your favorite kid moves out of the house. Dad, you're being super unfair to Ed and Eric right now. No, oh, come on. As if they didn't know who my favorite is. Lucky for me, they share my adoration for you, so they never blamed me. Catherine laughed and Elmer's heart grew twice its size. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty awesome. I just got off the phone with Eric. He won a super difficult case today. He did? That's fantastic. I'm not surprised, though. Your mother and I always struggled to scold him whenever he got into trouble. He always knew how to twist an argument in his favor, even in his kindergarten years. The other end of the line went silent for a couple of seconds. Kathy Cat? You still there, honey? Dad? Is someone next to you? Alma's throat went dry. No, not right now. Why? I think I can hear something. A man's voice. It's faint, but deep and guttural. The now familiar coldness was gathering in the pits of his arms again. What does it say, honey? It says... Ellie came out of the kitchen. Something about confession? Honey, I have to go. I'll call you back tomorrow, alright? Daddy, is everything okay? Elmer? Ellie's voice was coming from a broken cavern inside her chest. She was walking slowly towards him like an infant trying to walk again after falling for the first time. 
Her eyes were purple from all the crying she'd done. Yes, honey, don't worry. We'll talk tomorrow. Catherine protested, but Elmer placed the receiver down before she managed to finish her sentence. Elmer? Ellie was shaking as if thousands of volts were going through her. I can't. Drool was connecting her inferior lip to the upper one like a spider web. I can't take it anymore, Elmer. They've gotten so loud. Elmer, they're everywhere. They've been screaming, Elmer. They're so, so loud. Elmer watched her with sad eyes. Eliza, I'm sorry, but I really can't hear anything. In her despair, Ellie let out a scream, cupped her hands over her ears, and collapsed on the floor. Elmer rushed to her side and tried embracing her, but she pushed him away. Make it stop! Please make him stop! Why? What are you saying? That I must confess! Elmer was confused. He tried pulling his wife into his arms again, but she grabbed him by the hands, interrupting the hug midway. You already confessed, honey. Ellie pressed her lips together and shook her head forcefully. And it's all right. I understand and I forgive you. I forgive you, Ellie. I love you, but this has to stop. We really, really need to get you professional help. I cheated on you. Elmer froze. Ellie put her head in her hands as her violent sobs echoed in the hallway. And there it was. Elmer's doubts finally confirmed. When? Ellie was rocking back and forth, crying with the passion of an entire chorus in a Greek tragedy. Elmer's patience was over and done. He grabbed his wife by the elbow and forced her to look at him. When, Eliza? He didn't ask with whom. He didn't care who she cheated with, knowing how cold his wife was regarding matters of the heart. She would have confessed her infidelity years ago. However, the messy circus she was providing made it clear there was something bigger than cheating to the story. Elmer felt the life draining out of him as the seconds passed by. Please, Eliza, please, please tell me that Catherine is my daughter. For the love of God, woman, please tell me that Catherine is my child. Ellie didn't answer. She just cried harder and tried taking Elmer back on his hug offer. That was enough of an answer. Elmer got to his feet before she even had a chance to touch him. I could confess! I could confess! I could confess! Please, Elmer, please make them stop. Elmer had to choose one of two options. One, call an ambulance for his deranged wife and tell her that he forgives her so that she gets hospitalized with a little peace of mind. Or two, grab his coat and go to the bar down the street where the guests were few and the barkeeper wasn't talkative. Choosing was easy. He could still hear Ellie screaming, even as he closed the front gate behind him. I confessed! I confessed, you rotten beings from hell! What else do you want from me? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Elmer got back home around 2am. He wasn't exactly drunk, but he wasn't sober either. The house was quiet, just like he expected it to be. He looked in the kitchen for his wife, even though he was certain she wouldn't be there. He didn't bother checking the bedroom or the living room. Alma went straight for the attic. He hesitated in the doorway. Even though he knew she was there, he still needed confirmation before he would proceed any further. Alma cracked the door open, just enough to let a thread of light in. Ellie's left house slipper was on the floor. Her right one was still attached to her, dangling slightly from the ceiling. Elmer had seen enough, so he shut the door. He had to wait for the alcohol to wear off before he would enter the attic again. Otherwise, Ellie wouldn't be the only mess that had to be cleaned up. 
he had to call so many people. The ambulance, the police, the funeral home, Eric Edward, and Catherine. There were so many preparations that needed to be done. So many flowers that needed to be bought. So much black cloth that needed to be ironed. But, first things first. Elmer got his toolbox and grabbed a screwdriver. He had to remove all the speakers he'd installed under the house's wooden floorboards. Hey there. Thank you so much for taking the time to drop by and listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me. I put a lot of time and effort into making these videos, so it's nice to know that there's someone out there listening. Do me a little favor, would you? Click that like button, leave a comment, and if you really feel like it, why not subscribe too? Okay, happy tales everyone. See you soon.